the Elmina Castle. Mm. How was it for you? Was it emotional taking you through, you know, the dark rooms? Yeah, it was quite emotional. I, I wasn't overwhelmed with emotion only because I've prepared so long for it. That mm. makes sense. I've I've worked towards it, I've studied it, I've seen pieces on it, so to go was just a full circle in my experience. Mm. Um, but this putting history in perspective, and as an African American that's important. A lot of us don't really get it. We don't get how Africa once was. It wasn't divided the way it is now, you know. So it wasn't just us taking from Ghana, it was all the neighboring regions. And how through many um, castles, such as La Mina Castle, it's just the, the biggest and the one in best standing. So really putting that in context helped me a lot. Um, but I, I, it's incorporated in my life. It's something that I will share now with my brothers and sisters at home. It's something that every African American, not just African American, members of the diaspora, they need to experience and come. That's why we're where we are, from Brazil to America to South America to Haiti, everywhere we are, it's because we've come from here. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, before we jump into your career as a model, I yeah. want to ask you this question. Before you came to Ghana, you probably visualized how Ghana was, how the people are and everything. Mm. Did it really synchronize? It did. It really, really did. I lived in London. I work in London a lot. I lived there for three years, so a lot of my friends are from Ghana. Mm. And the pictures that they painted is almost identical, you wow. know, to what I experienced here. And it's just a second home. All it is is a big Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> really. I mean, being here for five days, have you learned anything? Uh, vocabulary, local vocabulary. Have you learned anything? Not as much as I should. You know, Aww. and that's the people's fault. They need to speak to me in their local language. I'm from here now. So, Aww. no, I, I haven't learned as much as I should. You have to teach me something. I'll teach you something? Yeah. Tisikube. Tisikube. Yeah. Yeah. What does Tisikube. that mean? What did I say? That means you're so beautiful. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. How do I say thank you? Thank you. Medasi. 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 <laughs> okay. So, now check this out. <clears throat> Somebody just sent me um, an email that says, is she uh, married? I said, miss. I, I, well, you got a clever ear. Are you, are you married? I, are you attached? Do you have a TNT? Uh, Somebody wants to know. Kelvin. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Pa and co, as the French say. Not yet. So you don't mind getting married to a, a Ghanaian? Well, I know that I will definitely marry an African man. That is sure, sure. The culture is so rich, and I really plan to divide my time I mean, a lot. Apart from that, African men are really yeah. strong. They're strong. They're going to groove on. Is that what it is, huh? Yeah, they're going to groove on. Sometimes a little too strong, a little testy, huh? They're going to groove on. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> Let's get into your career, man. You were model up in Paris. How did mm. you get this connection now? But after the competition up in 2000, California, yeah. um, when did you know that you were going to get into modeling? Well, I did a bit of modeling before um, I went into the Miss pageant, the Nationals pageant. Again, I'm Miss MS, not M-I-S-S. -S. Yeah. So my division is Miss USA. So before I had gotten into that, I did a lot of modeling. I did stuff for the Gap and local things, California-based companies. And I actually was in school. I was in university. And I simply did a pageant just to pay for my university. That's it. But my story was so rich in history, meaning I'm third generation Californian, which is rare. Most black Americans are from the South. We came here and we went to the South to work the plantation. Exactly. So very few um, black Americans are generational third and fourth northerners, and I am. My father was a Black Panther. Um, my mom was part of San Francisco, the hippie movement. So I'm a true San Franciscan. So I think my story really resonated with the people in California. So I went on. Actually, my first pageant was Miss Teen, and I placed first. And I was like, that's fine for me. I had my school fees. And, and they said, no, you, you have to go on. So I did Miss San Francisco, and then I won that. And then from there, I was state selected for Miss California, meaning there was no competition necessary. The state chose me to represent them. So that was a huge honor, really a huge honor. Wow. But in being a Miss, I can't represent anything else. I can't say Miss, Sa Miss California wears Gap or Miss California, you know. And I had so many modeling opportunities. Good. That's, yeah. Is that how you went to Paris? Yeah. So from that, I was, again, I was the first black. So Paris has always been really embracive to black Americans since Nina Simone, Josephine Baker, to be the first of their kind. And they got word of my accomplishments and was really happy with my look. I was working with an agency on the East Coast, New York. Great. 
Uh, I want to jump into some of the designers that you, you work for yeah. or are working for now. You want to tell us? Oh, God, I've worked with many. Uh, again, I work with Versace, Donna Karen, African designers Alpha D, um, Coffee Insa from Ghana. Oh, Coffee Insa. Uh, yeah, I've worked right, with him. Right. I worked with him actually here in Africa, in Benin. We did a big show, and it was wow, wonderful to close the wow, show. It was a wow. big honor. Um, many, countless designers. I'm wearing Lanvin today. I've worked with Lanvin of Paris. You name it, I've, I've worked for represent Chanel. I was the face of Chanel sunglasses for a while. Wow. Yeah. You've been all over that. I've traveled a lot. I've worked a lot, yeah. Great. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is um, I kind of really... Uh, I understand that they give you a, a traditional name uh, in yeah. Elmina yesterday. They did. Um, huge. The, oh, the name is huge? No, the, what, what? no, no, no. The, the honor was huge. Oh, the honor was the huge. Name was okay. Huge. What is the name? What's your local name? Um, it's Nana Abba Kojo. I can't say the last. Can uh, they give it to uh, you? I, I got the name here. It says Thanks. Nana Abba Kondiaba. Kondiaba. Yeah, Please. Kondiaba. That's my name. Wow. Don't forget wow. it. Okay. Nana Abba. Let's say. What I told you first, they didn't mean beautiful. I'll tell you after the show. Okay. Oh, <laughs> now, so you plan so you, me you now, to, <laughs> huh? You plan me on your show. That's what you need to learn in okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, tell your final words. I mean, a lot of people out there, I mean, there are a lot of models, a lot of beautiful girls out here. Okay. I mean, talking about how you got into mother and everything. People look at you as a role model already. What would you like to say to all the young girls who are aspiring to become an international model just like you? To stay focused, stay healthy, know and understand that you are your business. You truly are your business and you're responsible for your look internally and externally. Keep God first, rest, drink lots of water, and take it as a business. You're an artist. Perpetuate yourself as such. It's not just you're cute and you, you know, and go out all night and party and do bad things that will really limit your career. Really take it as a business and educate yourself on models that have come before you. You know, there's a lot of lessons to be learned and, and, and really make sure that you embody the best of who you are. You can never be a number one version of someone else, only a number one version of yourself. Of yourself. Yeah. Exactly. I know a lot of young women who, uh, because they want to be model and coach, they want to keep in shape, they stop eating at 3 o'clock, they don't eat. You think that's a good idea? No, no. We all have that quota to fill. When I first started, I was very thin and I had to... But I always worked out and I ate right, but I was younger and I was naturally thin. But as I got, you know, more concrete in my career, I just make sure I maintain a healthy image. And now more models are maintaining healthy images. And we owe the Tyra Banks that, you know, the Elle McPhersons, um, Claudia Schiffer even. They were always a size 6, 7, which is a normal size for a 5, 10 woman. Wow. You know, yeah. Okay, well, so it's nice having you. Um, yeah. You leave tomorrow. I do travel tomorrow, yeah. When are you coming back? Very soon, hopefully. Do you have reasons to be back here? Yeah, it's my country Lots now. Lots of reason yeah. now. Okay, well, it's nice having you. Wish you, you a safe flight back to California tomorrow and hope to see you in the near future. All right. Okay, well, just in case you're just showing it, you're logging it down to Spotlight coming to you live from Studio D. Most definitely. Ice is holding it down. You like to have the baby? Sounds really cool. Ice told the baby. Jump into a fast commercial break. When I come back, it's about 